And if the Bible teaches anything, it teaches that Jesus Christ is coming back. Do you realize it, folks? Christ is coming. Do you fully understand the hour we're living in right now? Jesus is coming. This is the culmination of all human history. Someday, at a point in history, there would be an end of an age, an end of an era, in which He would return to earth again. And this has been the hope of the church down through the centuries. We've been waiting for this event. All our lives and all the history of the church has looked forward to this. And the brighter this hope has shined in any generation of the church, the greater the church's joy and ability to endure the difficulties in the world. When he's going to come in mighty power, and he's going to set up his kingdom, what a glorious day that's going to be. I'm looking for him any time. He goes, therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Will things in the troubled world ever be better? Will there ever be an end to war and hostility and inequity and crime and chaos? The answer is a resounding yes. When Jesus Christ comes to rule, when he returns to be king. Jesus talks about his return in Matthew 24. He says, two men will be in the field, one will be taken, and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, one left. The picture is, whether it's the day you breathe your last breath or the day when Jesus comes back, on that day, your life will stand alone. You will stand face to face with Jesus, the judge of the world and the judge of your life, and his judgment will be final. The second coming of Jesus Christ will be public and seen by all. It will be public and seen by all. There will be no question that you are witnessing the return of Jesus. You won't say, oh, it's just a bad storm. No, Jesus said, as the lightning shines from the east to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Everyone will know this is it. What a glorious hope that is. This is the hope of the church, and this is what we ought to be preaching. I warn this church, I warn the church body worldwide, anybody that can hear this voice, this one voice in New York City at this time, if you're sitting at a table with people whose affections are set upon the things of this world, you have to get up and get out of there now. What I'm saying is this, that God will bring his justice against all evildoers when Christ returns. It ain't going to be pretty, so much so, the Gospel of Matthew calls it the great and terrible day of the Lord. And this bothers people who don't understand the nature of God. God never changes. Church, listen, that pattern of thinking has led to these kinds of statements. Listen, oh, there's the God of the Old Testament, but there's the God of the New. When that time's up, The same one from the ancient times is coming back. Life and passion comes when you and I are walking in one heart and one accord with Almighty God who sent His Son to die as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of men and women and children created in the image of God. And it's in the heart of God that not one in this world should perish. Now, folks, you can't have passion in a religion that's focused on itself. It's impossible because it's, it's against Christ. It's against the very reason that he came to this world and went to a cross. God wouldn't be God without his righteous judgment. It's his purity. It's his holiness. All of the wrath that was doomed and destined upon you and I, Jesus took at the cross for us. So listen, either you receive the suffering of Christ on the cross as your lamb, or you go it alone. God loves you, provided a way for you to get to heaven. He bought you a ticket with his own blood. He's holding out to you the the, the ticket, and you take it or not. If you take it, that's how you stand in heaven forever and thank him for it. And if you refuse it, that's why you sit in hell forever and condemn yourself because you didn't take it. It's a remarkable proposition. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations 
and then shall the end come. But the last instructions of Jesus must remain our first priority. And my question to you is, how many people have grown in their relationship with Christ because of your life? It's time, folks, to deal with sin. Christ is coming. To seriously consider, do you know the Lord? Are you truly Christian? If He comes tonight, will it overtake you like a thief? Deal with sin. Christ is coming. You don't need to play games when the power of God is here for you to live a new life. But you have to make the step, we all do, of saying, I'm not living this way anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. You've got to get some gravel in your gut, for lack of a better way of saying it, and say, my part is to form the intent to not want to live this way. God's part is to give me the power to make that a reality. But I have to form the intent. Jesus going to the tomb and saying, roll away the stone. He didn't roll it away. He gave wine at the feast, but he said, you fill the water pots. There's some labor we have to do. It's exactly what we talked about earlier. If we die in our sins, separated from God, having rejected Jesus, the only one who can reconcile us to God, we will spend eternity separated from God. I'm urging you to hear God saying in his word right now, I have made a way for you to have life forever with me. Trust in Jesus before it is too late.